So much of my time is spent on working out methods of getting models from um, SketchUp and taking it into Unreal, making sure it's clean enough to not cause problems with light maps and all that sort of stuff. But I always have a challenge in when I set up a, a walkthrough. I don't have a, a sort of first person that can go through it uh, comfortably. I usually have to use just the setup that it comes with when I set it up as a, a blank slate when I'm working. So what I decided to do is actually just set up a first person um, sort of setup that I use when I start creating my models, uh, if that makes sense. So I'm creating a first person setup that works nicely and then every model that I start to bring into Unreal, I'll bring it in using that as my template startup. So let me show you what I mean there. If I go create a new model, usually I'll take a totally blank. But in this case, now I'm creating my, my own sort of first person template. So I'll select that and I'll go in, let me just call that RT for Rory Townsend. And uh, I shouldn't say first person shooter because we're not going to be shooting, just first person. Okay, I'm calling it that and I create a template. Uh, no, did I say this is with starter content or not? Um, okay, let me just add starter content um, in case I need it. So it's just on the back burner there. Maximum quality in the desktop console. Okay, I'll say create the project. And yep, we go through there. I'll just pause it until it's loaded. Okay, we have it loaded. And we have the normal setup here. Um, what I'm going to just do is two of my settings over here in my editor preference. Just for my navigation process, I usually set this up. Let me go to, where are we? Viewport. I click these two buttons just so that I can navigate similar to what I'm used to. Um, I come from a when it comes to 3D uh, polygon modeling and all that, I come from a C4D background. Um, so editor preferences there and then project preferences. I am just going to go to the render settings and switch off auto exposure at this stage because if I'm busy with any lighting, I don't want it to adapt to the lighting that's sort of available for the eye. I wanted to adapt to the actual lighting that's in the scene, so I'll go to render and scroll down here to where it says auto exposure and just disable that. When you're done and you're wanting to add auto exposure, you can enable it and use post processing and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so what we want to end up with here is not a, a block with all of these blocks showing the demonstration and this gun is able to push out a projectile and you know, shoot things around so we don't want that all i want here is this platform as a starting point so that at least we have a surface onto which um, this first person is actually going to be moving because if there's no base here with any collision it's just going to fall through the air so the name here i am going to click on first person and just press delete and go around and do the same. Now I can go into the outliner here and delete the stuff, but it's more interesting to do it this way. So I'll select and press delete. And you'll notice because we've um, rendered here with light maps and all that, you can still see the shadow still remains over there. Um, let me just clear that off. There we go. Click around, or it would be easier if I just zoom totally out and I can see a bit more. Oops, I took the floor away by mistake. And then also the side walls I'm going to be removing. Um, so I'm just taking the side walls. The only thing that I'm left with is the floor. Um, now you notice with this first person shooter that came into the scene, uh, we have this bounding boxes here and to see what it is, it's basically the light mass importance volume, uh, which for those who don't know, it's actually putting a square around the area of main concern so that when you're doing any rendering, it doesn't take into consideration, uh, you know, the sky infinity and then bounce 
photons and all in that direction. It just considers the area inside this box, uh, post-processing volume, etc. Um, those things are said, but you can learn about those in other settings. And yeah, let's just go into that. Um, what I do here at this stage also, because um, I don't use this uh, sort of setup for gaming. If you're using it for gaming, different things apply. I use it basically for visualization, whether it's architectural or concept design, um, stuff as such. So I use my lights, all that, all my lights are basically dynamic. They, they're not uh, static lights and they're not, um, there's another name given to it. Uh, let's just check here. Yeah, they're not static lights or they are not stationary lights. A stationary light has the ability to, to adjust with shadows when you move the lights around. Uh, in addition to dealing with light maps. So it, it's a very optimized kind of setting. Static lights, you have to render it every time you move the lighting structures and so forth. What I do is I set my light source, which is this main light, I set it to movable. And automatically you can see that it's it's now generating um, sort of light into all the areas. So this is real time. It's a bit more expensive on your processor, but for the purposes that I use it, Real time doesn't really affect me that much because I don't create multiple levels of games and so forth. The other thing that I need to adjust is the skylight. Same situation, I click it on to move and there you can see it automatically clears up all those redundant shadows. So this is in real time, it's busy rendering the lighting in the situation. Okay, so those are the things that I set up there. The other parts of this uh, in the world outliner here with uh, the post-processing and all that, that you kind of can learn in some of the other tutorials that uh, some other people have done. And in some of mine, I've actually covered those particular areas. So I don't want to go too much in depth. The purpose of this one is actually to show you how I create an environment to start off my projects where I have a first person in the environment that operates like the gaming one, a, a nice smooth interface. Now, for those who are skilled enough to be able to uh, import a first person from another space and bring it in, so be it. I'm, I'm just trying to give those of you who are keen on creating an environment with a first person in that is able to kind of walk through when you press the play mode and collide with objects, be able to do the moves, but not have the gun in their hand or be able to shoot. This is the setup that I'm recommending. And this is how I would create my environment. And from here, I import all my models. And then once I have my floor uh, of a model that I import, then I can remove this, this current floor that I have here. But for now, I need the floor. And let me just show you what we have in the situation. So if I go and I press play, there we are in the first shooter. Now I've just got to move my earphones a little bit off my ears because sometimes the volume is a bit loud here. One second. Uh, when I press the mouse button, it's making a noise. Uh, fortunately, uh, it's not making too much noise here. Okay, but that's shooting the projectile. So what we want to switch off is this gun, the projectile and this crosshair. Uh, and then the individual will just walk. And then, of course, walking forward is the W. Walking back the S, to the left the A, to the right the D, and then to jump the space bar. So basically it's the gaming movements that we want. So doing it this way, we are actually taking all of this first player blueprints that have been set up and optimizing it for ourselves. And then we're going to be building a, a um, structure around this or place this first person in that structure. And then we have all of those smooth features um, of the first person. Okay, I'm going to just go out of the playing mode. Let's just go. Now what we've got to do is go and remove these guns, remove these arms, and there's little objects in front of these guns which are, uh, I think, related to VR work as such. So we'll, we basically won't delete them. What we'll do is actually hide them from rendering so it will be out of our viewport. So to get to it, uh, there are different ways, but one of the ways that I do is basically select the object. You can click on the camera and then it will show you what the camera is seeing there. Right click it, right click and click edit first person character. 
it will open the editing interface which is a blueprint and it looks extremely intimidating but spawn projectile that means the projectile that's shooting out so the way to disable this is basically coming to this point here where it's indicating when you press something it is going to instruct something else to happen so on a simple level you press alt which is the usual thing of editing these uh, nodes and you click there and it will disengage same thing with the bottom one okay so when the input is touch or input action fire is disabled so no projectiles will shoot there now what we've got to do is uh, say compile because it's going to recompile that without those attachments and we can save that then the next thing we can do is come down let's see uh, yeah um no it's not in that section we go we look up top here below compile this viewport we click that and there we're seeing the object in the viewport now we're going to select the the arms that's holding the the gun and then on the right hand side you'll see the details panel if you scroll down you go down to render um, there we go on render you're just saying let this not be visible so you're disabling that okay so you've taken the arms away and you can also just click this if you choose to which says it must be hidden in the game because you never want to see these arms in you know when you're doing a architectural walkthrough or so so disable that we click on the gun same thing click on the other gun same thing oops we'll leave that hidden um, then these are um, not sure what it refers to I think it's got something to do with the VR um, I'll get to know that a bit better but the same thing we are going to hide them uh, we hide that reference and these are like referencing at the front of the guns then the only other thing we have got to sort out now is a crosshair let me just show you what I mean if we click the play oops now let me stop that um, I've made these edits let me just first compile and then save it and go out here and then I can click play and let's just look at that at the moment there now when I click the mouse button there is no gun there is no arms there is no projectiles coming out but that crosshair is what we want to remove um, so I'm going to press escape to get out of the play mode uh, let's zoom out here okay I am going to yeah the way I do it is if you look down at the bottom here by your content folder you're going to see when I imported I imported the starter content that I make available for when we bring in models we can use some of that starter textures and so forth as as a starting point but if you go look at first person over there first person you go to first person blueprint double click on it okay so it's that one first person BP click on it and then in the blueprints folder you double click that and in there you will see a thing that says first person HUD which is head up display you see there's a little cross on it there you can basically click on it it will open up this dialog which says draw crosshair in center of screen uh, same thing goes here we can click alt and click click and click and disconnect the first parts the instructions that are showing from the first part and then we can go compile and save okay and now when we go and play the game we have absolutely no interference here no arms no guns no projectile when I click but if I go W I'm going to move forward if I go S I'm going back if I press spacebar jump up and down okay I'm going to just press escape and just show you that's that's the first person there okay and this uh, area this little console here is for where it will start from whenever you start it's a kind of a, a start of point I haven't yet mastered uh, understanding how these things all work but for now we'll just accept that whenever we start the game it usually will start from that point I assume uh, don't quote me on that let me just show you that if we take in an object and oh here's a little nice thing that I didn't know about editing 
outgoing if I want to change the the handles here I would press on W and then E and R and it was a bit confusing because in certain of the other editing programs like C4D the W, E and R operated or it was E, R and T they operated differently to what we have here um, and I only recently discovered the other way of, of navigating through them is just using the space bar so now once I select the object I press space, 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 space and we navigate so I can, you know, move it up, press the space bar, size it, space bar again. And if my first space is not taking me to where I want to go, it's just a quick another one. So, so once I select an object to, to edit it with these uh, handles, you can select it and space, space bar and just navigate through the three settings. That's been a tremendous help for me because then I don't have to frustrate myself with knowing the WERTs and the inverted ones on different apps as such. Okay, um, so what I want to show you is this block that's come in here. Um, if we look at it, um, I th think we should see some collision. Yeah. Okay, so it's, I think it's, by nature it's got a collision mesh around it. I am not sure. I just want to test this out. Let's just see. I'm going to press play the game. Uh, and we're going to go W, yep, so we move back, go W, and it will clash, see if we can jump on it, jump, jump and go forward, uh, I'm not jumping high enough, okay, anyhow, um, this is how I'll set this up, okay, I'll remove this cube now, so this is how we'll set it up, get it all ready, and then we'll save this as the actual um, starting point that we use. If you choose to, um, the skylight, let me just make sure, I'm not sure again, skylight is on move. Yeah, if you choose to set it up like this and you want to remove this uh, importance volume and the post-processing boxes around here, you can go ahead. But it, it does really help that if you build in here and you're gonna build a much bigger situation, you can just increase the post-processing volume and the um, the light mass importance volume and that sort of stuff over there. Okay, so just important to remember, um, the light source, uh, I switch it on to movable so that it can not every time have to render out the images. That's just my standard when I'm busy designing stuff. And then from there we can go. So now we have a standard uh, light around, we have a skylight, we have atmospheric fog, we have all the conventional stuff that are sort of set up in a default setting and we have a first person that's able to walk through an environment and interact with it. And this little arrow over here is basically just showing you which direction it will start walking at. Okay, so I'll just position myself fine over there select the ground and then let me go and say control s um, control alt s let's just see here i'm going to save all levels no and save all okay see where we are now. I am going to go and close that and if I open this up again and let me just look at my library. Okay, there we are there. So if I start a new project I can basically go in, start this up and there we go with the installation that we did. We have that all up and running press play and we can interact with the environment. However, I wouldn't recommend that you start working in this particular environment because when you're done and you save it um, and you want to start up a new project with that same first person being in it, you, you won't have access to any of it. So the best option to do there is uh, basically to go to your start of menu and realize that the RTFP which I created is my 
core starting sample. You can right click on that and you can go to clone and there it will go and create a, a, a clone of it and we can name this uh, let's say uh, house walkthrough. Press create. It is going to rename code projects Okay, what is it saying here? RTF, my contain code, that rename projects. Okay, let's just continue and we wait for that to process. Okay, there we can see it's completed. It will take sometimes, it takes a little while to generate the, the clone, but there we have it, house walkthrough. So we'll open that now, let's see. Um, Hopefully this doesn't take a while. I might have to do a little pause again. Uh, but this house walkthrough is now a clone of the RTFB, the one that we set up with the first person and got the scene uh, kind of prepped as we wanted to. So it possibly could be a good way of you setting up an entire scene with the lighting and everything that's suitable for you. Uh, create that environment, all the, you know, the settings that you like in that environment. And whenever you start up a new project, you just create a clone of your standard project, give it a new name, and that's the one you work in. Just like I've kind of done now, and then open it up there. So I'll just put it on pause for a while so it can load, and we'll have a look at the uh, what we've called now the house walkthrough, and uh, see how that looks, whether it functions well. Okay, there we go. It's loaded up in the top corner. You can see that it says house walkthrough. Um, and my navigation, if I look at all the navigation, all the stuff that I set, uh, preset in that, um, what was it, RT something, can't remember. Um, that has all been transferred into this house walkthrough now. So at this point now I can start constructing let me see if I go um, and just go and create, right click here, just create a folder, call that model and I'll see if I've got a model. I actually haven't checked if I have a model accessible, but let me see if I can go collect one. Okay, I went to find a folder here, so I just paused so I could find a folder. Um, let me grab hold of this OBJ here. I'm not too sure what it is. Uh, we're going to see, click here, generate UV maps, combine meshes. I'm going to just click combine meshes because I just wanted to come in in one mesh. It's just a quick, quick example um, to see that if we've set up the, the actual um, level that we've done and we've created this first person environment whether we can bring outside models in and it will comfortably work. Okay, there we go. And there we have the mesh. Let's take it there. Okay, and because I have it selected, I can press the space bar to select the different sizes. There we go. I just want to see if it, if I can collide with it. Oops, let me grab that and rotate that. Uh, grab the camera here. Yeah. Let me just see if I can see the person. Let me take it up. Okay, so I'm going to press play now and let's just see. There, I see the guy as I walk into him. Yeah, I'm colliding with him because the the collision box around him is probably quite quite big or even this box of the first person is quite big, which we can alter if we choose to do so. Okay, and at the moment it's still busy compiling the shaders, so that's why the object's got nothing on it. Um, but it stops compiling when I get into gaming mode. So when I pause this, it should carry on compiling the shaders and then get the texture onto this object here. If not, I can just build quickly. Let's see what goes for what. Put it on a quick pause. Okay, it's just about coming to the end of the generation of the actual uh, uh, textures that are on there but just just to show you that that's what the textures start to look like it's now imported it 
and it's got a collision in it and everything. So it seems to be working quite fine. So if I'm, I'm there, um, that's the object. I'm going to go into gaming mode and that's what I see there. If I go, I kind of collide with him. If I move back, that's how I see the object and collide. Okay, the other thing is if I move off this uh, surface because the surface is keeping me up, I'll fall. So let me just move far back and you'll see, boom, I'll drop down. There we go. Press escape and just press play again to get back on the surface and escape again. Okay, so hopefully that's been uh, something to help you set up your scenes. Um, it's a good principle to set up the scene exactly like you want. So for every new project you bring in, you've got a, a good starting point that you build along. Uh, if you choose to, for example, have uh, lots of materials that you have included in here, you can have a folder filled with all the special materials that you use and save the project and then create a clone and work with that clone. So you always have this kind of group of assets that you start up with. So it's not a, you know, starting from a clean slate and having to deal with all of those stuff. So I hope this has been of help to you and uh, yeah. Um, Trust you will enjoy carrying on building uh, stuff in Unreal. I am really looking forward to the data smith um, system that they're bringing into Unreal where we're able to import models and the their system will be able to clean up the models effectively because that will just open the doors majorly for like, I, I hope for SketchUp models where there wouldn't be problems with, um, you know, textures and UV maps and all that sort of stuff. At the moment it works great as it is. Um, if you bring in a clean model, you're going to get clean results. If you bring in dirty models, that, you know, will have dirty results. So um, just as far as I'm concerned, if you're wanting to know a little bit more about the bringing of models across, etc., look at the couple of the other tutorials that I've done and check other people's tutorials on moving stuff from SketchUp to Unreal. I truly believe that Unreal is really the future of uh, where things are going to as far as real-time rendering, as far as VR goes. It's just a very intuitive inf interface. So anyhow, uh, have a fantastic day and God bless.